Uh, thank you all very much for the opportunity to talk about uh, my standard patient population. And so my uh, uh, discussion will be just going through some of the sparse literature to Dr. Hamill's point on um, high BMI considerations for lap coli. Uh, I have one disclosure, but it's not related to this talk. Um, in my head, I think starting with a patient scenario, and this is the average patient I see in my clinic, 45-year-old female, severe obesity with a BMI 54.7. Yes, that's the average BMI of our practice, um, who presents with uh, chronic cholecystitis and gallstones, which are more common in a high BMI patient population. Um, and the patient was found to have gallstones uh, and some uh, thickened gallbladder wall. Uh, interestingly, I was trying to spend some time finding any data on uh, accuracy, sensitivity, specificity of diagnostic tests in high BMI patients, and there's really just no data out there at this point. I even talked to our radiologist at Barnes and found very little, and so an opportunity for future research for sure. Uh, technical considerations in these patients, um, positioning, how you're going to access the abdomen, trocar placement, um, how you're going to approach it from a minimally invasive approach, the length of surgery and conversion to open. Um, Kind of in the positioning, steep reverse Trendelenburg, uh, I think, is really important. If you're able to uh, put them up a little higher angle, you can get the intra-abdominal adiposity and uh, contents to uh, uh, go down inferiorly using gravity. I think broad straps is really important. I have very large straps. I am, uh, I'll use two or three. Um, if possible, uh, due to the need for intraoperative cholangiogram, I'll tuck an arm just because it improves the mobility of the C-arm. Um, if I'm able to tuck the arm. Uh, sometimes once my BMIs get above 60 to 70, it can be a little bit more challenging. And so there are ways to use bed extenders to accomplish that. Um, a footboard, I think, is really important, especially considering, I think, the importance of steep reverse Trendelenburg, and then a fluoro-capable bed. Because not all high-weight uh, capacity beds are going to allow you to get the C-arm underneath. So something you want to talk about with your OR staff ahead of time. Abdominal access. So a lot of people use a Hassan entry. That doesn't work very well for a high BMI patient. If you're going to do a Hassan entry, you're going to make a larger and larger incision, and then it's almost like a little mini open incision. And so I use a combination of optical entry and varus entry, which um, has some data behind it, uh, both being low risk. Uh, and obese pa uh, patients with obesity, it's about a 1 to 1.5 percent risk for an optical entry. Uh, with varus, it's about 1 to 1.5, based on what I could see in older literature from the 90s, actually. And I typically enter, no matter who it is in a high BMI patient, uh, in Palmer's point, uh, two finger breaths below the costal margin in the left upper quadrant. Uh, I find uh, kind of in the midclavicular line. Uh, if I'm going to injure anything, it's stuff I can fix and I feel more comfortable in that area. In high BMI patients, you get access the way you're able to get access. I, I don't think taking a risk saving incisions is helpful. And this can be a nice accessory port if you're having difficulty with visualization. Um, so, kind of going down that trocar placement, uh, I typically use a 12 super umbilical trocar um, just uh, to do all my work through there. Switching hands around can be challenging with a thicker abdominal wall, so I keep my 12 up high. Uh, the camera port, I think, is the most important one to consider. Putting it in the, uh, the peri-umbilical region is going to set you up for failure. And so typically, um, and also supported by the literature, I recommend going about 15 centimeters down below the xiphoid process. Uh, pre-insufflation, which ends up being somewhere around 15 to 20 centimeters post-insufflation. And then the other thing is as BMI goes up, what I found to be uh, technically beneficial is transitioning that camera to the right of midline, so I get a little bit better visualization, especially as you get the astrodome effect, your arms are going to be stretched out and you're going to put more strain on your back, so moving everything over and coordinating around that right upper quadrant can be really beneficial. And then going back to that uh, Palmer's Point entry, if I'm having a difficult time with lifting of the liver due to fatty liver disease and an enlarged um, liver, which I see in a significant number of my patients, I will um, turn that, opt uh, that uh, varus needle site into a 5 millimeter trocar, and I can either use a triangle liver attractor, which has been described in the literature, or just an instrument to depress the uh, uh, transverse colon or duodenum down to get a better view of the critical view of safety or to get, yeah, in fundibulum to obtain the critical view of safety. Uh, to uh, encourage some discussion, uh, robotic versus laparoscopic, in uh, patients with class 1 obesity and higher, there is no difference seen in conversion rates to open, length of stay, or postoperative compli uh, complications between the different MIS approaches. So in my head, if you feel more comfortable robotically, do it robotically. If you feel more comfortable laparoscopically, do it laparoscopically. 
Um, length of stay, I think, is an important one. Uh, many of these patients not only, or length of surgery, excuse me, is higher, and this has been seen both in adolescents and adults. Um, and interestingly, uh, depending on the study you look at, it's anywhere between 5 to 25, 30 minutes differential um, with some pretty impressive uh, differences in uh, higher, more severe obesity with BMIs of over uh, 50 in our super morbid obesity patients. Um, and then also, conversion to open. Uh, it can, Historically, patients with class 1 obesity and higher were at higher risk for conversion to open. Um, and uh, in fact, there is literature that shows that there is an increased likelihood for a patient with a BMI of over 50 to have a planned open operation. And uh, like, this, uh, like being discussed earlier and in the data that I found, an open approach has a significant increased risk of complications and morbidity. And um, uh, maintaining a laparoscopic approach will help you overcome increased surgical site infection risk, increase, increased ventral hernia risk, and overall morbidity, um, and uh, clavian dindo class four and higher uh, complications. So overall outcomes, um, unexpected admissions, length of stays, and complications are all considerations that I talk about with my patients that are a little bit different than the patient with a BMI of less than 30. Um, we've actually seen, depending on the study, a higher risk of unexpected admission, something to be considering, especially during the COVID pandemic, when you may be limited on inpatient admissions, as we are at Barnes. Um, uh, there is a significant increase uh, odds ratio for patients with severe or super morbid obesity uh, with a BMI of greater than 50. Uh, and then increase the relative risk of uh, increased length of stay, um, increased for each category of BMI in this one study, and other studies correlated with this where there's an increased length of stay if they had that unexpected admission with higher BMI patients. Along with, then, like I mentioned earlier, in, uh, increased incidence of complications. And this is kind of interesting to review back from the late 90s up to more modern literature. There's a lot of variability out there in what the risk of complications are when you compare obese, uh, patients with obesity to patients without obesity. It's about a 5% all comers, depend, uh, irrespective of clavian and dindo risk, in patients with obesity, um, class one and higher. Um, and then there's just variable data from there. Uh, the interesting one, looking at uh, more modern literature, 2017, 2018, NISCOP evaluation demonstrated an increased risk of severe complications, uh, clavian dindo class four, or uh, uh, single organ dysfunction or worse, in patients with severe obesity of a BMI greater than 40. And um, interestingly, there are, there's one study that's shown morbid obesity is an independent predictor of bile duct injury. So uh, getting that critical view of safety is really important and taking that extra time, which we know is going to happen with higher BMI patients, is important. Uh, me and the uh, slide transition is not, are not working well today. Um, and so in conclusion, I think the important thing is knowing this data and knowing how you're going to approach the patient so you can counsel them ahead of time. They're at higher risk for um, uh, being admitted to the hospital, higher risk for staying for a longer period of time, higher risk for certain complications, and then um, uh, need for extra incisions. And I think talking about this ahead of time and planning not only with the patient but with your OR staff will help you out in the long run. And I uh, look forward to answering questions. <laughs>